This is the Craftsman 26 inch select. In this video, I'll show you some of the basics that will help you use this machine. To use the electric start, we'll go ahead and plug it in. Put the key in, put the engine on run, choke it and prime it four times. Then hit the start button. Once the engine is started, move the dial from choke to run. You can also use the pull start, and if it's warmed up, you probably can just put it in run and pull it. If it's cold, go through the same uh, choke, prime it four times, and pull it. So let's go ahead and just put it in run, see how it goes. This is what you'll use to direct where you want to throw the snow. So depending on where you want the snow to go and the direction of the wind, you'll use this to adjust it. This handle here will adjust the top of the chute so you can throw the snow low or up high. This is the forward and reverse, six gears forward, six being the fastest and two speeds in reverse. When you're throwing snow, you want to be in full throttle, and this will engage the auger. This will be your forward and reverse, and you can let go with the left hand, and the auger will still rotate, and that's so you can adjust where the snow will be thrown. The main reason why snow blowers don't start when you need them to is the gas goes bad while the snow blowers in storage. Get in the habit of using stable 360 fuel stabilizer in all your gas-powered equipment. One ounce treats up to five gallons. Stable 360 prevents damage caused by ethanol and will keep your engines starting and running when you need the most. This is the little shovel that's provided for cleaning out the chute. You might want to turn the machine off when you use this and don't ever stick your hand down there and don't ever wear loose clothing, especially a scarf when you're using a snowblower. When I was using this yesterday towards the end of the project, I broke one of the shear pins. The shear pins are here, so the shear pin will break if you hit something like a chunk of ice or newspaper. The shear pin will break instead of your gear box breaking. So this is a much simpler repair. And this machine came with two extras. To replace the shear pin, if it's stuck in there, you might have to use a punch or something to get the old one out. This one wasn't stuck in, so I just find the hole, feed the pin through, and then in this case, I'm using a pin to lock it in place. Sometimes it's a bolt or not. These are the adjustment skids. You use these two bolts right here, and that will adjust how low your plow is to the ground. When I'm working on the driveway, I'll keep the plow about a quarter of an inch off the ground or the shovel. When I'm making a path out to the barn to avoid tearing up the grass, I'll lower the skid a little bit more and bring the front of the shovel or the plow up to about a half of an inch. When you finish with the snow blower, allow the snow to melt away. Use a small space heater if necessary. Once the surface is dry, spray an even coat of stable ceramic ProGuard on the auger's bucket and chute. This will prevent rust while in storage and snow buildup in the chute next time you use it. When you finish using the snow blower, don't just shut it off. Turn it down, let it idle for about 30 seconds, a minute, and then shut it off. Shear pins tend to break. So do yourself a favor, get a few extras and put them somewhere where you'll be able to find them when you need them. Now, the main reason why snow blowers don't start for people when they need them is when they're in storage, the gas goes bad. So get in the habit of using a fuel stabilizer That'll keep your gas from going bad and ruining your carburetor. Also, when you finish using the machine, fill the tank all the way up to the top, and that will allow for less room for oxygen or moisture to get into the gas tank. Hope you found this video helpful. This is usually a woodworking channel, but I do a little bit of everything. So I hope that you'll hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.